pasta and peas in red sauce. This is a super simple recipe. I, I really mean it. There's like six or seven ingredients. Kids love this one. Everybody loves this one. Let's get into it right now. I have uh, 12 ounces of frozen peas or 345 grams. I have one pound of Tubetti pasta. Uh, Tubetti is just DiCecco's brand of Ditalini. So it's a really good pasta for this. Though another really good one is small shells or even medium shells because then the peas kind of go in the shells. Really any type of small pasta will work well. Extra virgin olive oil, we're gonna use a half a cup. So a lot of oil, probably even finish with some more of the really good extra virgin olive oil at the end. Four cups of water, that's the cooking liquid. I have six ounces of tomato paste. You know, six ounces, can, perfect. You use the whole can here, you're not left with saving a little bit. This works great. You could also use a uh, passata or, you know, tomato puree, that would be great too. This is one large onion that we diced and the sweetness of the onion and the peas, the combination of those two with the tomato makes this super flavorful. I'm gonna finish with about three quarter cup of Pecorino Romano. You could also use Parmesan cheese if you want. I got a block of Parmigiano Reggiano over there, uh, which what I just used for the previous recipe I did, which was shepherd's pie, believe it or not. Final ingredient for this, and again, not a lot of stuff, is just some hot red pepper flakes. So that's it. You know, you could use a little bit, a lot. But again, it's just more of the te technique of this one that makes it good and we're going to show you right now how to do it. You can use a Dutch oven here, like a heavy pot, uh, even something like this works. This is a non-stick, but I really like it and it's perfect for a dish like this. You definitely need enough room in here because between the pasta, the onion, the peas, and all the liquid you're going to put in. So I'm going to turn the heat to about a four out of ten, just a touch less than medium. And then I'm going to coat the bottom of the pan with a lot of extra virgin olive oil. Recipe says a half a cup, but just just coat it. Just get a lot down there. It's really this, the play of this with the onion and the tomato and the peas is what makes it so good. You know, a lot of you are gonna just say, well, where's the garlic? If you wanna use garlic, by all means do it, but I gotta tell you, this dish is better with just onion. It really is. And the same thing goes for just like when you're doing, uh, you know, this dish, pasta pizzelli, uh, just the white one without the red. That one too is better when it's just onion. We're gonna saute this uh, until it gets soft and translucent. So, you know, below medium heat and about seven minutes of doing this. It's been only about three minutes. They look like this, but I wanna get them softer. I want them to like, kind of like melt in that oil, but I don't wanna put color on them either. So keep the heat, about that four, four out of 10 level. So the recipe calls for, what does it call for? What did I say? I said a half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, but you know, don't take my word for it. If you don't like that, you know, put more in, or if you want, um, what's wrong, Tar? I already prepared it for you. Oh, I know you did. Oh. I know you did, but I put it back in here because I wanted sorry. to be, I, No, no, Tara's Ta always in back of the camera, and she was like, where's your little, the little uh, thing of, uh, I said, I put it back because I wanted to be fancy and show you my, uh, my pepper uh, box, I guess that's what it's called. So I'm putting about a half teaspoon of crushed red pepper in there and just let it permeate that oil for like 20 seconds. And that's good. And now I'm gonna put my tomato paste in here. So this is six ounces, full can. You see those recipes are always like one teaspoon of tomato paste or one tablespoon. Honestly, I don't know who's making up those recipes because one tablespoon of tomato paste is it gonna do a thing. But six ounces of tomato paste, which is a can, standard can, is gonna do plenty here. So I'm gonna fry this in the oil for a few minutes. And if you'd start to burn it all, like say you have a non-stick pan that you're using, just throw a little bit of water in there and then, then you'll be fine. All right, and we're just gonna fry that paste in the oil. It's gonna boost the flavor of the paste dramatically. And you can see like how the oil's turning red, looking delicious. You can just look at this. Like, you know, you can just look at food and then kind of say like, that's gonna be good or that's gonna be bad. This one, especially as you're cooking it, you just, the smells, you're just gonna, you just know that it's gonna be great. But and we'll talk about it when I'm making the, when I do the pasta after, you see why it's so special how we're gonna cook this pasta in here and what it does to it. All right, so let's give this like another minute or two. Let's talk about today's sponsor, Beam. As parents and content creators, Tara and I need to be on all day long, which means that winding down at night isn't always easy. And with a business to run, we can't afford to be moody or less focused just because we had a bad night's sleep. So in a quest to help ourselves fall asleep and stay asleep, we found Dream. Dream is a tasty powdered cocoa drink that's made to be drank at bedtime. Since taking Dream, our nights have been calmer and our mornings brighter and more productive. I've been taking Dream cinnamon cocoa at night with a splash of cream, and Tara's been loving the white chocolate peppermint. It's not only delicious, 
delicious, but it's formulated with five natural sleep promoting ingredients. And Dream has no added sugar and is only five calories. So guys, if you're in need of a good night's sleep, head to the link in the description and use code SIPPINFEAST to get 35% off your first order when you subscribe and then 20% off all following orders. Plus, when you subscribe to Dream Powder, you'll receive a free frother with your first order. Thank you, Beam, for sponsoring this video. So that's a solid five minutes of frying that paste. We got four cups of aqua. That's it. All right, let's get it in there. And this is a good amount to start. It's gonna completely absorb into the pasta when we cook it. Bring this up to a boil right now and add one teaspoon of salt or even a little bit more because this is basically gonna become our cooking liquid for our pasta. So we want it to be very flavorful, just good taste. Almost like, it's almost like we're making the broth for our assassin's pasta, which I filmed that like, I don't even know when I filmed it. Like about two months ago and I don't even know if it's up on YouTube yet. Hopefully by the time I put this one out for you, assassin's pasta will be out. We are boiling, so. We're gonna cook our pasta and peas. So I'm putting in, I'm using a whole box, one pound, right in there, and then the peas. So I'm using one pound of the ditalini or tubetti and 12 ounces of peas, but you know, you can definitely go with the equal proportions if you want to. Okay, once you get it all mixed in here, just turn your heat down to about medium heat. I'm gonna go right to five out of 10. And that amount of heat will be a good amount to cook your pasta a slower rate than if you were had a you know crazy boil you know on your stove with you know just cooking in water. What's gonna happen here, all this liquid looks very wet right now, like just too much liquid. It looks like this is all gonna absorb into the pasta. The pasta is gonna release its starch. This is gonna become ultra creamy. It's gonna become just the mouthfeel, the deliciousness of it, of, with the oil and the paste, everything. All right, guys, so you can see a lot of the liquid has gone away. See how as I move this? Now, having that non-stick will prevent anything from really sticking hard down there. It's been seven minutes right now of the pasta cooking. So this little tubetti on the box, it says, I think, seven minutes. And But if you try this right now, after that amount of time, it hard as a rock. So. It will always take longer doing it this way. But again, it's gonna release a starch and it's gonna make it creamy without any cream. But I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here. This is hot water. I have a couple cups nearby. You're probably not gonna need all of it. Now, even though that wasn't quite hot enough, it brought it down a little bit. It'll come back up again and the pasta will keep cooking and the peas. So just keep stirring and keep doing this, adding a little bit of liquid at a time, not too much so it doesn't become soupy. And then uh, you cook it to al dente, that's it. If you were just to boil the pasta, make this and mix it in, it wouldn't have the same amount of creaminess factor. Also the sauce itself penetrates the pasta, so it's actually turning the pasta red. You could even like wash off this pasta and it will still stay red. Versus if you were just to take boil pasta and do it, it would all just slide off of it. I'm gonna put a little bit more water in, not a lot. And that might be enough to get us to the point where it's al dente. All right, 18 minutes now, guys. Now that's how it looks. If you think you're too dry here, just touch it up with a little bit of liquid. Just turn it off and get our cheese in and bring the taste tester down. Hello, Mr. Taste Tester. Hi. Thank you for being in this one. You weren't in the shepherd's pie that we, we always make two videos in a day and uh, his stomach was feeling a little off before, so but that was like, since these videos take so long to make, that was like, what, three hours ago. So now it's pasta and peas time. James, tell me what you think of this masterpiece. Um, well, we basically had this the other night, except the one the other night had like ground beef in it. The ground beef, yeah, it wasn't, that's not a part of the recipe. I made uh, arancini, so, uh, which is on the, gonna be on the website. I don't know if I'm gonna do a video because it's such a pain to make those, you know? Um, and I had extra ground beef, so we mixed it in here. It was the exact same recipe with the, you know. Yeah, I'm not gonna say how I feel about this one yet, but I think you know. Go ahead, let's see. I love olive oil, you can smell it. I put a little too much on there. I put the really good extra virgin at the end. I still think it's good. Trust me. It's so simple, but it's so perfect. Like, I feel like, I feel like if, 
somebody went on the show like chopped or something and they only got to choose like three ingredients i feel like you should choose these i agree so james um don't give it a, let's not give it away but give a rating yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah hold the rating put it up turn it over and just tell mom mama wants to know a little bit okay so james why is why do you like it so like what do you like about it it's like i love how it's creamy and i heard you saying that there's no cream in it yeah. which doesn't really make sense to me but um and also peas are probably like one of my favorite vegetables like yeah. peas and celery like i feel like this kind of pasta this shape just like it's like soft and it's tiny and it goes well with the peas because the peas have like a little bit of crunch in it and um the peas are also tiny and then like i don't know what kind of cheese it is pecorino it yeah it tastes great with it um hey we trust you so that's uh i think that's pretty good summation yeah. the only thing is that is that you put too much olive oil on it i know i did a little too much at the end for him yeah. but don't worry that's not so i'm there. gonna show now um a 10. it's a nine out of ten with all the olive oil oh all right well listen there's a whole nother there's a whole nother pot here that's not like that. yeah if you if you got rid of like if you didn't put so much olive oil like it's a 10 so i'm gonna say it's a 10 not a nine i gotta get a better nozzle for that one that frantoia it comes out like a like a fire fire hose you know like i gotta put in a squeeze bottle this is great though Yeah, I think you're right. If you need to impress somebody, you should make something like this. Yeah, it's like it, you can you can impress. It's See, so the thing. it's so easy. Like, cause they'll be like, they'll be flabbergasted of how you made it so quick with few ingredients, and it's so good. James, you're right. You're gonna you when you gotta make this for you. You know, when you get your first girlfriend, your first serious girlfriend, you gotta make this for her. Yeah. Right. That's what I would do. <laughs> Mama's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that awkward note, we'll uh, see you next time.